It's Friday, April 8th, and this is now on HNN. <laughs> Shanghai's strict COVID lockdown has residents hitting a breaking point. This sense of outrage, of anger at the level of ugliness. Developing news, a missile hits a train station where thousands of people had gathered to flee in eastern Ukraine. And we've learned the state has approved the Navy's plan to install new Red Hill monitoring wells. Godspeed, Axiom 1. Another day for the history books here at Kennedy Space Center. I'm Manuel Bajorquez with the story of the first fully commercial space crew heading to the International Space Station. We've got all these stories plus several celeb sightings in Hawaii this week. We'll show you the pics coming up on This Is Now. New at noon, a bill that would strip the University of Hawaii as the sole manager of Mauna Kea passed the Senate Ways and Means Committee today with major amendments. In this new version, Senate leaders say the responsibilities to manage the mountain will be split between the new Mauna Kea Stewardship Authority, which will oversee about 9,500 acres of conservation land, and UH, which will be tasked with managing 550 acres of research lands. Senator Donovan De La Cruz, the chair of the committee, said the latest proposed draft balances the interests and concerns of both the Native Hawaiian community and the state. The bill now heads to the Senate floor for its final vote. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for watching. This is now China is dealing with its worst COVID outbreak ever. Shanghai officials continue to enforce strict COVID lockdown measures that are making life difficult for millions. Christy Lou Stout has more. Shanghai is buckling under a citywide lockdown that has no end in sight. Some residents have reached a breaking point and they are speaking out. On Friday, Shanghai reported over 21,000 new cases of the virus. And as cases rise, China continues to cling to a tough zero COVID policy of mass testing, quarantines and lockdowns. It is taking a toll on both lives and livelihoods. Now, this video clip has gone viral in China. Listen and watch how this man is venting his frustration in lockdown Shanghai. <laughs> CNN cannot verify the authenticity of the video, and there is also mounting anger over food shortages. This video clip circulating on Chinese social media shows a confrontation between residents under lockdown and police. Uh, the residents are shouting, we are starving, as they try to break out of the compound. And again, CNN cannot independently verify the authenticity of the video. On Thursday, the Shanghai government said it is doing its best to improve food distribution. There is also rising anger after a health worker was caught on video beating a pet corgi to death. This happened at a residential compound this week after its owner was reportedly taken to quarantine. A resident filmed a COVID prevention worker hitting the corgi three times with a shovel. The dog died at the scene. Now, CNN has reached out to the residential committee overseeing that compound, and they told local media that the owner would be compensated. Now, these viral video clips underscore the extreme measures taken in the name of zero COVID, and the outcry is only growing. Christy Lu Stout, CNN, Hong Kong. To D.C. now, it's a moment 46 days and more than two centuries in the making. It has taken 232 years and 115 prior appointments for a black woman to be selected to serve on the Supreme Court of the United States. President Biden is celebrating the confirmation of Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson as the first black woman to reach the Supreme Court. They were greeted with cheers from a crowd at the White House's South Lawn for a special ceremony. You will inspire generations of leaders. We're going to look back and see this as a moment of real change.
At least 50 people were killed and about 100 injured after a Russian rocket hit a train station in eastern Ukraine, which was being used to evacuate civilians out of the country to safety. Clarissa Ward has more. This has a hugely damaging effect because people are already so frightened. They're already unsure of where to go, of where is safe in Ukraine because there have been so many different pushes on different fronts. And the one thing that did seem to be relatively safe for ordinary civilians was the rail system. We have seen, of course, examples uh, of Russian forces targeting elements of the railway, but for the most part, it has been able to function largely, and it has been a crucial lifeline for people trying to get their families, their children, their loved ones out of some of the hardest hit and most highly threatened areas. And the fact that this was a railway station that was hit, that it was full of people trying to evacuate will, of course, create a huge ripple of panic and fear among ordinary people who now will really second guess the decision to take that step, to go to a railway station and potentially risk their lives. I also think it just infuses this sense of outrage, of anger at the level of ugliness in the sort of indiscriminate targeting that we have seen throughout this war. And I think it sends a shiver down the backs of so many people wondering what will unfold in the East. Russia has promised this renewed push. Could it get even uglier? Could it get even worse than so many of the images and stories that we have already seen across this country? It's a question we don't know the answer to yet, but we may well find out in the coming days. Caught on camera, police and bystanders wrestling down a man they say was trying to rob a bank. Honolulu police responded to the Bank of Hawaii in Pearl City around 1.30 yesterday afternoon on a call of an attempted robbery. Witnesses say they saw the man going behind the counter and harassing the tellers. When police arrived, customers in the bank help those officers detain the man. It was it was crazy it all happened. And then people were like trying to run in to see what was going on. Like, oh, the bank's closed, only the ATM's open. We've reached out to HPD for more information on the suspect and his charges. We're still waiting to hear back. New today, the Navy's plan to install eight new groundwater monitoring wells has been approved. The Commission on Water Resource Management signed off on it. The wells are part of an effort to find out whether fuel is moving beyond the original spill area at Red Hill and to keep an eye on the purity of the aquifer. Even more monitoring wells are in the works. A jury has convicted a man of attempted murder for stabbing and nearly killing a teenager at Kahala Beach. We, the jury in the case, find the defendant, Eric Willis, guilty as charged. Prosecutors said 19-year-old Eric Willis repeatedly stabbed Malia Kalahiki in July 2020 in an unprovoked attack while she was sunbathing. Kalahiki was 17 years old at the time. She identified Willis as her attacker, and surveillance video showed him walking near the crime scene, but the weapon was never found and no physical evidence was presented at the trial. Willis's attorney says he plans to appeal. Willis never testified in his defense, and he could face life in prison with the chance of parole when he's sentenced in mid-July. The attorney general's office arrested the woman in charge of training at the Department of Public Safety. Authorities believe she built her career on lies. Our chief investigative reporter, Lynn Kawano, has been following the investigation since she broke the story three years ago. Marty Martinez was brought in in handcuffs by the attorney general's office. Martinez has been in charge of training thousands of state law enforcement officers for years. Now she is accused of lying to get to that high ranking position. She's charged with perjury, a felony, tampering with a government record and lying to authorities. 14 counts altogether. The complaint points to a labor board hearing. Good morning calling this hearing to order. Only our cameras were there in December 2019 when attorney Ted Hong, who represented a fired prison guard, questioned Martinez about her credentials. Where did you get that 92 criminal justice degree in criminology from? On the right. And where is that? It's in California. 
In April 2019, we reported on her resume as she applied for promotions within the state agency. The documents show the experience and educational accomplishments she claimed changed constantly. One resume said she received a bachelor's degree from Southern Oregon University. But an email I obtained from the school's enrollment office said there was no record of her getting that degree. Discrepancies missed by the previous administration at the Department of Public Safety. And had they done what they were supposed to do in terms of due diligence with respect to her credentials, had they done that, we wouldn't be here. So many lives would not be ruined. Martinez's attorney says she was aware of the investigation and was willing to cooperate. During the lead up to this arrest, uh, offered to uh, uh, provide polygraph statements, offered to have additional meetings, all those were rejected by the state. Briner says they intend to fight the charges. I'm Lynn Kawano, Hawaii News Now. New at noon, the city and county just held a blessing for the West Lock Affordable Housing Complex in Eva Beach. They also welcomed the property's first tenants. The building includes 58 studio units for individuals or couples at or below 50% of the area median income. Except for the fact that um, it's really nice to see something come to fruition. You know, we have so much on the drawing board. We're so eager to try to get as many projects underway, developed, so people can move in like today. So to come to a moment like this, which is the fruition of the last couple of years of a lot of collaboration from a number of different people that had to come together to make it a possibility, to handing out keys today for people to actually move in and be able to begin, begin living their lives in a location that works for them, not just with the park here for our keiki, but also in its general location. And the facility, is, which you can see, is really beautifully, beautifully designed and built. So this is one of those good moments, and we really want to savor that. Rick Blangiardi there, Mayor of Honolulu. All right, guys, speaking of the city, want to take you live outside right now. Look at the rain coming Ooh. down for parts of the mountains there. Also, a little windy, if you saw in the interview with the mayor just then. Let's see an update on all the conditions. We're going to toss it over to Guy Hockey. The strong winds are responsible for the only weather alert across the state. That's the small craft advisory for the coastal waters from Oahu all the way to the Big Island. It's going to be rough and choppy out there. So be careful if you're on a stand-up paddleboard or if you're in a small boat because things could go sideways pretty quick with those winds being so strong. And because the winds are uh, picking up, we've got a rising east swell. But it's going to be choppy on windward side, so not all that great. We also are expecting a south shore swell to be picking up later in the day and slowly rising into next week. Monday, Tuesday actually looks pretty good. And North Shores and West Shores are on the way down. But we are expecting another pretty solid swell a week from today. It's going to take a while. All next week doesn't look very good in terms of surf. But we got beach weather across the board. Leeward side is expecting a lot of sunshine. Windward beaches, not so much. Going to be cloudy and going to be, uh, you know, windy on the windward sides with those scattered showers throughout the day. Drier for leeward sides. And because of all the sunshine on the leeward sides, that UV index is at 11. That's extreme. So grab a tube of sunblock, grab a bottle of water before you head out to those leeward beaches. Four private citizens are on a rocket ride to space. It's the first fully commercial flight to the International Space Station. Manuel Bohorquez has the story from Florida's Kennedy Space Center. Godspeed, Axiom 1. The picture-perfect liftoff from the Kennedy Space Center marks yet another turning point in human spaceflight. Flying on board, the first all-private crew headed to the International Space Station. Together, a new chapter begins. American Larry Connor, Canadian Mark Pathy, and Israeli Eitan Stibbe are each paying millions of dollars for the trip. The commander of the 10-day mission is former NASA astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria, who retired 10 years ago after logging more than 250 days in orbit. I've been advocating for commercial human spaceflight since I left NASA. And, you know, thinking that I would do that from the sidelines as a cheerleader, and now I get, you know, the ball on uh, first and goal, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity. I, I couldn't be happier. While SpaceX is providing the ride, another company, Axiom Space, is managing the mission. The crew will work alongside professional astronauts once they reach the space station. Lopez Alegria says that makes them more than space tourists. These guys are eager, they're smart, they're, I think the most important quality that they have is they want to perform. 
Axiom CEO spent 30 years at NASA and the company plans to build the first commercial space station. This is the first step in a number of flights that allow us to work with NASA to learn how to operate together. Enjoy your trip to that wonderful space station in the sky. For now, it's all eyes on Axiom 1, scheduled to dock at the space station Saturday morning, setting the foundation for a new era of space adventure. Manuel Bojorquez, CBS News, at the Kennedy Space Center. Everyone's getting to go to space, but us. Someday, Ash. Someday. Someday. Someday it will happen. All right, got to update you on a big celebrity story we've been following here at mm -hmm. HNN. Following the recent arrest of Ezra Miller after that incident on the Big Island, fans on social media are lobbying to get the actor replaced in the coming DC film, The Flash. Miller was arrested arrested on charges of disorderly conduct and harassment last month in Hilo. Miller is set to star in the film adaptation of the superhero tale, which is also a TV series. So this is where it gets super interesting. The movie is slated to come out in June of 2023, but there's been a lot of chatter online that Miller could be replaced by this person, Grant Gustin, who stars in the television version of The Flash, and many think he should take over the role because of all the trouble Miller's been getting into. He's been portraying that version of The Flash on the CW since 2014. Miller is also still expected to be in the upcoming release of that new Fantastic Beast movie. I didn't know a lot about The Flash before I looked into the story earlier today. You know, it came out in 1940. The nickname for The Flash is Scarlet Speedster, hmm. and he has the superpowers, of course, of going really, really, really fast. And apparently, apparently, Superman and The Flash race in several editions of DC Comics. Do you know who wins? Superman? It's a tie. Oh. Trick question, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> well, Will Smith is banned from attending the Oscars or any other Academy event for 10 years after he slapped Chris Rock on stage at this year's ceremony. Now, the move comes after a meeting of the Academy's Board of Governors to discuss a response to the actor's actions, which they called unacceptable and harmful. Now, Smith resigned from the Academy last week during the run-up to the meeting and said he would accept any punishment the Academy handed down. And historically, the previous year's Best Actor winner presents the current year Best Actress Award, so with Smith's ban, the Oscars will have to break that tradition next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, you guys, New Kids on the Block and TLC are coming to Hawaii, performing at the Blaisdell on August 5th and 6th, and tickets go on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. for Hawaii residents. You can buy up to eight tickets per person, and if you're an HNN viewer, you get first dibs. There's an exclusive pre-sale an hour before at 9 a.m. Just use our passcode HNN. Now you can buy the tickets at the Blaisdell box office by phone or online at Ticketmaster or the promoter's website. Man, I've had TLC in my head ever since the news of this broke. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love them. Love the band. And mm -hmm. new kids on the block as well. All right. More entertainment news for you. New at noon. We got Billy V standing by with a brand new interview with our local contestant on the American Song Contest that airs right here on KHNL. On this Aloha Friday, we go out towards California. We're waiting with high hopes. Look at this. It's Bronson Varda. Yay! What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Body, How you body is in the house. <laughs> Brother, yeah. uh, first of all, you've just gotten to California just recently, right? Kind of give us the lowdown on, on what's been happening with you, uh, how things have been going so far. Oh, it's been going good. Just a lot of stuff every day, something new. Um, I don't know. The weather is crazy. It was 72 when I first got here. Now it's like 97. And it's like, what's going on over here? Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's been awesome. An awesome experience so far, man. Every We have wardrobe, we have rehearsal. So they, they're, they're keeping us busy up here. Sounds good. How often are the rehearsals? And are you getting enough rehearsal time? Because I've been seeing the show and the show is just phenomenal. Yeah, the show is a, is a full on production, man. Um, so I have a re I have rehearsal probably in an, in an hour, another rehearsal. But they, yeah, I think they do it. We just did the first one yesterday and another one today, Saturday, and even Sunday. So, yeah, it's going to be a great performance. How is the band? How is working with these guys? Oh, this these, this whole crew is awesome. Everything's just on on point, you know. Yeah, everybody's all professionals up here. So, 
Yeah, it's talk, super awesome. Talk about your song for a couple of minutes. Yeah, uh, my song is called For You. Um, I wrote it as a kind of like as, as a manifestation, uh, just manifesting me being up on, on stage and being able to, you know, share my talent and, and, and sing my songs through the world. And um, that's what the, kind of the song really speaks to. And um, it's mainly a song about, you know, just chasing dreams. I mean, we have, you, you know, we have so much talent in Hawaii, especially, you know, local artists and musicians. There's, there's so much talent, you know, in, in Hawaii. And um, a lot of times, um, just local boys and girls, just, they, they get they get stuck in that, that um, you know, Hawaii mindset that you can't leave the rock, you got to stay home, you know. Um, a lot of people just want to venture off. So this song kind of just speaks to that. If you got a dream, if you got, you know, if you know you're talented in, in, in any area and you, and you want, you have a dream of, you know, of chasing it and, and um, you know, and you want to work, you're willing to put in the work, go and chase that dream. And then that's what the song kind of, kind of speaks to. You've been actually chasing this dream for quite a while. How long have you been singing yeah. and thinking about having a shot like this? Man, you, ever since I was a little kid, you know, you see, you see shows like The Voice. Like American Idol, grew up watching American Idol. You know, you see Jasmine Trias and Camille Velasco up on the on the big stage, and um, you say, "I want to be there one day." You know, and it's just surreal. Yesterday was the first time I was actually on on the stage. You know, and so I just kind of just took it all in. Uh, I've been dreaming about you know singing at, at this level for for a while, and um, yeah, it's just it's, uh, it's surreal. What has the social media response been so far? Man, I'm from Hawaii, man. We got so much love back home. So everybody has been super supportive. So much aloha back home. And um, and that's what I'm doing this for. I mean, this this what this show is about is about, you know, not just not just myself, not just my family. I'm representing a whole state, a whole culture, and that's and that's something I don't take lightly. And um, I'm doing it for the Hawaiians, I'm doing it for all the Polynesians and every local boy and girl that has a dream. So I was listening in on Billy's interview with Bronson, and he seems like a really stand-up guy. You can watch him Monday on KHNL in primetime. And then Billy is planning to interview him next week again after the show. Remember, you got to vote for him to make sure he goes on to the next round as well. Hawaii always turns up when it comes to voting. We've had some always, luck. Always, yeah. And I'm excited to see what his set looks like because they've been so elaborate. Yeah, they've been cha- they yeah. have been really cool. Yeah. And he had a band. He mentions it in Billy's interview. And you can hear more of Billy's interview, I should mention, coming up this afternoon. Around 3, 4 o'clock, he will stream on the Billy B Live show. It's shared on our H&N Facebook page as well. Awesome. Yep. All right. Celebrity sightings to get to. Check this out in an amazing outfit. Yes. By, by Chrissy Teigen and John Legend. The whole family in Waikiki there. These photos are courtesy of Real News Hawaii's Facebook page. They always get the cool celebrity sighting photos. This one taken in Waikiki, like I mentioned, they were also spotted at Kualoa Ranch. Next up, we got a shot of no other than Conan O'Brien. Yeah, he was on the island of Lanai. And then also spotted at Nikos in Kailua. Then Hilary Duff and her whole family there on the big island. And there's one more photo to share. Padma Laxmi, oh, our wow. very first guest That's right. on This Is Now when we moved to TV. She was awesome. She was on the garden aisle. You can see all the celebrities spread out throughout the islands and having fun. I also sent some Britney posts this week. Yeah. I don't, she sometimes posts old videos, mm-hmm. but she was on Maui. Yeah, why wouldn't you want to be here? And Jack Johnson just announced some new albums on the way. One Step Ahead is the first single from the album Meet the Moonlight. Now, it was recorded in both L.A. and Hawaii and will be released on June 24th. We made it to Friday. Sure did. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Happy Aloha Friday, everyone. Ashley's going to be back with you on First at Four on KHNL. And we'll both be back on Monday for This Is Now right here on KHNL and all your H&N digital platforms. Have a great weekend.